along with F and K, are a no-show today. Secondly, we're only showing videos today, no live demo. We weren't sure if we'd have any bandwidth at the con after all, and even if we did, I didn't relish the idea of requiring an escort out of PAX under armed guard because everybody on the convention center suddenly uh, discovered that I had the laptop that could ban or unban their buddy from Xbox Live. <laughs> <laughs> Final caveat, and then I'll get to it. Vulcan is not our only tool, and this isn't even all of Vulcan. I've had to remove or skip over some stuff for security and privacy reasons. All right, enough of my blabby blabby warning crap. Let's get to it. <coughs> For most of the videos, you'll see a top-down view of my desk. Vulcan be can be controlled using a combination of the mouse and keyboard and optionally with an Xbox 360 controller. Oh yes, and the boxing gloves, that's just my way of psyching up for a day at the office. We all have our thing. This is Vulcan. We'll start with the gamer tags complaint queue. As you can probably expect, the left stick is used for navigation. Hold it up or down to quickly navigate the column of gamer tags. Agents can also use the D-pad, but in order to give them a greater degree of control, holding the D-pad doesn't continuously move the cursor. It only moves the cursor once per press. Like I showed on an earlier slide, each of our decision types corresponds to a color on the Xbox 360 controller. Red for accurate, green for inaccurate, yellow for escalate, blue for reasonable. Once an enforcement agent knows these color codes, they can literally kick back in their office chair and start issuing enforcements. Here, you can see how with only button presses, an enforcement agent can roll through the queue. The cursor simply continues to the next item once a decision has been made. Obviously, we're tuning for both accuracy and efficiency here. The bright, glossy color changes clearly indicate the decision being made, and the automatic progression to the next item allows the agent to focus on the decision, not the interface. Of course, an enforcement agent can change their decision if they make a mistake or rethink their decision. They can move between columns and simply press the button corresponding to their new decision when, it, when that item is highlighted. Agents can also pre-fill an entire column with the same decision, as you see up there. They do this by holding the left bumper and pressing the button corresponding to the decision they want to pre-fill. This is useful to set all gamer tags in a column, for instance, to a reasonable decision, which is quite common, and then choose to alter each gamer tag one by one. It's all up to the enforcement agent's preference. I should mention here that we've implemented a safety precaution. The, the agent cannot set an entire column to accurate, only reasonable, inaccurate, or escalate. So let me take a step back from the application itself and mention a few pieces of terminology. We actually had a bit of rough time when we first started uh, constructing this new version because we didn't have any idea what to call some of these things on the interface. So the right side we call the decision queue. It's where enforcement agents make their decisions, after all. On the left side is the enforcement queue. Once decisions flow over here, as just happened, we record the decision in Vulkan and submit the enforcement to Xbox Live. You can flip between the decision and enforcement cues using the right analog stick or a keyboard combination. I'll show you this in a moment. Finally, the decision queue is broken up into three sections. Active, runway, and limbo. Active is where the enforcement agent is currently working. Runway are the incoming complaints for agents to handle. Limbo is the place where decisions have been saved in the application, but they haven't yet been recorded or submitted for enforcement. An agent still has the opportunity to move back into limbo and change their decision. Okay, let's go back to the application. First, I'll flip here between the decision and the enforcement cues. You'll notice that all non-accurate decisions disappear very quickly. The decisions have been recorded in Vulcan, but there's no enforcement action to take against them, so they don't need to stick around. What remains, however, are all of the gamer tags that need enforcement you'll see the activity LED light up as we record the enforcement and make the necessary calls to the Xbox Live service. Once the enforcement succeeds, the item disappears from the enforcement queue. This all happens in the background while the agent continues their decision making, or they can flip over into the queue and watch enforcements happen in real time. So gamer tags are pretty easy. Profiles, on the other hand, are a bit more involved. I'll switch into that part of Vulcan and show you how that works. Another quick interface rundown. Decision queue on the right, enforcement queue on the left, just like with gamer tags. Active column full front, 
Limbo columns to the left, also just like gamer tags, but Limbo for profiles only has two columns uh, because of the extra space we need for the profile card. This is the new piece that we don't have for the gamer tag complaints. This is where we can see the content on a user's Xbox Live profile after they've had a complaint lodged against them in the profile category. In addition, their avatar is displayed. This lets us find the modded ones. Okay, back to the application. Profiles work much the same way as gamer tags. Navigation is the same, decision buttons are the same, even the process is very much the same. Agents make decisions on the active column, the color changes, and the decision is eventually pushed through to limbo and into the enforcement queue. However, if an agent marks a profile complaint as accurate, one moment, there we go. If, if an agent marks a complaint as accurate, they must mark the individual fields that violate the code of conduct as well. This includes the ability to also mark the gamer tag. Why do they do this? Well, because when we send an email to the user who has violating content in their profile, we include that profile content in the email. This way, the user knows exactly what they had in their profile that violated the rules. As this video continues to roll, you can see how a single button press allows an agent to make a non-accurate decision on a profile, and the focus simply moves to the next. Again, efficiency is great, but we cannot sacrifice their accuracy. This is your paid subscription we're talking about, after all. So if an agent marks a complaint as accurate in the active column and then doesn't mark any profile fields as accurate, we clear their decision to ensure there are no accidental enforcements against players. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead real quick here and show you one last thing. One last feature I want to show in profiles is ba basically a warning to players who think it's clever to draw content in their profile's bio field. The Vulkan interface is tuned for narrative format text content, but some players cleverly format their text so it appears on the console or on xbox.com as a drawing, basically the Xbox equivalent of ASCII art. What you see here is our way of enabling us to view that content. With a simple click and drag, agents can reflow the text to fit any width. Now, if you want to use ASCII art to tell everyone what a legit clutch pro beast you are, that's cool. But if we see a middle finger robot, expect a suspension. Uh, by the way, our enforcement agents uh, got so good at spotting middle finger robots in the old version of Vulcan that we almost didn't have to do this feature. <laughs> totally true. So there's a lot more to see in Vulcan, but I don't want to stay, overstay my welcome up here. Uh, we'll be posting this talk to YouTube uh, after PAX 